is Father Bob Warren of the Franciscan Friars of the Atonement. Thank you for listening to this rebroadcast of the Ave Maria Hour radio show. The Friars' popular Ave Maria Hour was first brought to the radio airwaves in 1939, recorded in New York City and on the mountainside grounds at Graymore, a home in Garrison, New York. These timeless classic stories of the Bible and the lives of the saints came to life each week through dramatic reenactment by professional actors and actresses. You know, friends, Christ once said, Do not hide your treasure under a bushel. In saying this, he meant share your gifts, share your talents. The Friars of the Atonement feel the message in these broadcasts remains as powerful and timely as when they were originally aired, and we are so happy to be able to share them with you today. To learn more about the missions and ministries of the Friars of the Atonement, I invite you to visit our website, www.atonementfriars.org. In the meantime, sit back and enjoy this rebroadcast of the Ave Maria Hour. Blessed Raphaela Mary. Hey. Who's that? Me, Pablo. Put that gun down. Anybody with you? Nobody. Oh. Let me sit down and read... They're alive, anyway. Uh, something, huh? We could be like them. That's right. We could be dead, but we're not. Just the two of us left, huh? Those fascist swine, they left us for dead. You got a cigarette? Be careful with the match. Somebody might see the light. Who? The dead don't see and the fascists have gone. They may not be too far away. <sighs> well, that's good. How's it going? Think we're losing this war? Who knows? Who knows what's going on up in these miserable mountains? I'm starving, that's all I know. I could eat a mule. Uh, There must be a village somewhere in this area. We better stay away from the villages around here. They're all fascists. Well, we could pick up a couple of fascist uniforms. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Well, with your idea, is there something wrong with it? I was just wondering how a fellow like you would feel in a loyalist uniform. Loyalist? Fascist, you mean. Maybe you're fighting on the wrong side, my friend. You want to know something, comrade? I had no choice. I was in jail for smuggling. I broke out during a bombardment. I thought I might be safer if I joined up with you fools. You ought to be shot for talking like that. <laughs> yeah, let's find ourselves a couple of uniforms. The dead have no use for them. Only it surprises me that a dyed-in-the-wool communist like you can hide inside an enemy uniform. I'll hide in anything if it serves a purpose. That's right, my friend. I'll cheat, I'll lie, I'll betray if it serves the ultimate end. Andre. Andre. Her voice again. Sister Raffaella Mary. She was dead now, dead since 1925. Now it was 1938, and Spain was being torn by civil war. It was odd how this woman's voice would come to me so often. She had meant nothing to me, not really. She had been a friend of my mother. She used to talk to me a lot when I was a boy, always preaching, always trying to teach me. Andre, each of us has a standard of behavior, high or low. Only we ourselves can decide. I like to think that humility has a very high value. Humility and a humble pride in one's love of God says, I stand before thee, O Lord, thy servant, loving thee, and dedicated to serving thee through serving mankind, reflecting thy spirit that dwells within me, proud that I am in thy image, Oh, Andre, if only you would listen to our Lord. She and her 
stupid concepts. Ooh, a man shouldn't talk to himself. Uh, I was thinking, that's all. About a girl? A woman. <laughs> no, nothing like that. She was a nun. I knew her when I was a child. She and my mother were friends. We used to have talks, especially after I went to college. About what? About the rotten society we live in. Well, you boys are going to change that, right? We'll change it, all right. You know something, comrade? You bore me. Come on, let's borrow a couple of uniforms and get out of here. The mountain battlefield was not a pleasant sight. A few hours before, it had been even worse. Now it was deathly silent, and her voice kept haunting me. It reached out to me across the years. I remembered the last time I'd seen her, in Madrid in 1923. She and her sister Dolores had entered the convent there. Her sister was Mother Superior. I was allowed to visit. And I found Sister Rafaela Mary scrubbing a kitchen floor. Andres. Oh, my dear boy. How very nice of you to visit us. I had to. I heard about you. I had to see for myself. I was told you insist on doing menial work here. Menial? The daughter of the mayor. Scrubbing kitchen floors. Y you could have been a great lady. Oh, but Andres, I'm a bride of our Lord. Oh, yes. Don't laugh. Please don't laugh. Well, you're, you're too old to be scrubbing floors anyhow. I'm 73, Andres, and I really feel very vigorous. <laughs> but what are you doing here? Where have you been since you left college? Oh, I spent some time in Paris and a few months in Berlin. You know, outside of Spain, Europe is in shambles. Yes, I know. It's so terrible. But Germany will find a solution. I talk with a lot of people there. Germany is in an awful condition, I understand. It won't be for much longer. I'll tell you what I think, even though you won't understand. I mean, you belong to the church, and you don't yet realize the church is completely outmoded, incapable of being even a, a, a part of, of the solution. And what is the solution, Andres? Communism. And Germany will soon be a communist state. First Germany, and then Europe, and soon the rest of the world. Oh, my dear boy. I pray you're wrong. What good has communism ever bred? Andres, it can only breed evil. Narrow-minded bigots. She was like all the rest of her kind. The nun? Oh, you got her on your mind, comrade. Here, pass me that cartridge belt. Oh, you look all right in that uniform. Communism breeds only evil. Is that what she said? What else could she say? She was a nun. She was right, too. What? You communists bred Hitler, didn't you? You ought to be shot. <laughs> You'll talk too much one of these days. Look at it this way, comrade. If there'd been no danger of communism in Germany, there'd have been no Hitler. You believe that? But to me, it's plain. Your nun is right. You know, it's still too dark to find our way through these mountains. Let's sleep a couple of hours and then push out of here just before dawn. All right. I suppose we'd better get some sleep. We lay there between some rocks in the mountains. There was no moon and there were no stars. Nor was there a breath of wind, only the stench of death. I tried to sleep, but sleep wouldn't come. Hey, comrade. What? Tell me something. What makes a communist? You wouldn't understand. Frustration, huh? <laughs> you talk like a fool. You want to tear down everything, isn't that right? You're against religion because religion says you have to be decent. You're an ignorant fool. Uh, tell me something, comrade. Does being a communist make you feel important? Importance has no significance. Oh, Andres. Andres, you are important. Important to God. 
Don't you see that you can contribute to his world like a necessary part of his creation and purpose? Yes, he has need of you. He needs your loving heart just as much as you need his love. I won't listen to that kind of talk. I enjoy talking. I wasn't talking to you. There's nobody else here, comrade. You're cracking up? Shut up and go to sleep. Don't shout. Respect the dead. But then you fellas don't respect anything, do you? Why should we? You don't even respect yourself, do you, comrade? Enough to want my share of what's owed me in this stinking world. Why should some people have everything and I get nothing? <laughs> Andres. Andres, ever since you were a little boy, you thought the world owes you something. Don't you understand the world owes us nothing? And God owes us nothing. Andres, it isn't what God can give you or do for you. It's what you can give him and do for him. I couldn't put her voice out of my mind, out of my consciousness. I tried to rationalize. She'd had no influence on me. I'd listened to her, but I'd never absorbed anything she tried to tell me. I remember I, I used to push her words away from me. To me, they, they symbolized discipline. The kind of discipline that says, you mustn't do this or that thing because it's wrong. The kind of discipline that says, be courageous, stand on your own feet, and acknowledge God. I rejected everything she'd ever told me. Hey, wake up, comrade. Oh, I... I just took a walk. There's a village half a mile from here. I could almost smell the coffee. You think it's safe? We'll know when we get there. I suppose the, suppose the fascists are there. Nah, I didn't see any signs of soldiers. Anyhow, we're wearing the right brand of uniform. Yeah, but if they ask questions... I'll risk that. I need nourishment. All right, let's go. Ah... <clears throat> uh... Listen to that, will you? Yes. The symbol of man's enslavement to dogmas and capitalism. I'll bet you're loaded with slogans. Come on. To me, it sounds like home. You know what it sounds like? Yes, yeah, you just told me. It sounds like my old lady when I was a kid. Me and my brothers and sisters... All of us trailing after the old man on our way to Sunday morning mass. Where did it get you? Didn't you ever go to church, comrade? Until I was old enough to know better. Sunday morning mass. And then the family dinner. Hey, it was a good life. You didn't answer my question. I asked you where it got you. It'll get me where I want to go in the hereafter, maybe. You make me sick. There it is, comrade. A little Christian village tucked away in these mountains. Let's make sure there's no danger. From what? Look for yourself. The village square in front of the church. Not a soldier in sight. We found hospitality. We found a lot of old people and women... The young men were away fighting in the army. The villagers believed we were on their side. There was no joy in this tiny community. Only a, a weariness of war. And all life seemed centered around the church as if... as if that were the only thing they could cling to in the terrible days. In one house, we were given food and a place to rest for a few hours. Ah. Uh. <laughs> This is more like it. I'd forgotten how respectable people live. It's like coming home. The ignorant fools think they're winning this war. Did you hear them talk? Maybe they are winning it. What do you think? <laughs> you know where you belong? Against a wall, facing a firing squad. And everybody in this village with you. Comrade, do you mean to say you'd kill the people who've given you hospitality? They'd probably slit our throats if they knew who we were. You know, 
I don't believe they'd do a thing like that, comrade. I wouldn't trust them. <laughs> and I wouldn't trust you either. If you ask me, you're like them. You're a fascist at heart. Is that what I am? Is that what they are? Uh, that's about it. <laughs> comrade, try to get it into your skull that not liking the communists doesn't make you a fascist. These people, they're just simple, God-fearing folk. Your trouble and the trouble with all these people is you're scared to break away from worn-out ideas. You're afraid of change. Andres. Andres, of course there is a need for change. And we can feel secure in making a change when we accept the truth that while change is inevitable, there is a center of security in it that is unchanging. God, we can feel secure in making changes when we take the attitude that change is the opportunity to realize greater good through closer contact with our Lord. Without him, no change can be for the better. Again, her voice. Only while it hammered at my brain, there was another sound. Pablo opened the door. A young woman stood there, the daughter of the house. Move over to the window, both of you. And she aimed a rifle at us. I remembered her name was Pilar. She was about 30, and she had the same weary look in her face that was shared by every other person in that village. Don't try to reach for your rifle. I thought we were among friends, senora. Do what I tell you. I know how to shoot. Yeah, but she does, too. You were talking to each other just before you came into the village this morning. The shepherd boy was close to you. You didn't see him, but he was there. And he heard you talking. You're communists. Uh, in these uniforms? In those uniforms. What are you going to do, senora? The men will be here in a few minutes. They'll take you to the jail. My husband was killed last year, killed by people like you. A lot of our men have been killed. I would not want to be in your shoes. Well, uh, I've been in better places. I knew there was danger. I knew we shouldn't have come here. It's your fault. I blame you. Why not, comrade? Blame me if it makes you feel better. Do you realize what'll happen? We'll be shot. These swine won't show us any mercy. Why should they? You scared, comrade? We've got to get out of here. Yeah, I don't see much chance of that, do you? Well, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> well, what are we going to do? There must be something we can do. To die in a battle is one thing, but to die like this, to be dragged out into a village square and shot down. Well, you can only die once, comrade. Maybe it's how you die that matters. One thing's sure. These people will let me see a priest before they shoot me. Is that all you can think about? In the end, there isn't much else a man in his right senses can think about. There's not much we can do about being here or about what's going to happen to us. We're no longer in charge of ourselves. Andres. Andres, you're only a little boy, and you have a lot to learn as you grow up. There'll be times when you'll find yourself in a situation over which you have no control. You'll be fearful. But then you must remember, something can be done. Admit you need help. Say to our Lord, Lord, I cannot handle this problem without you. I know there is only one presence and one power. Oh, my Lord, Take charge of this situation in your own way. Oh, that's funny. That's very funny. What's wrong with you? You had an answer for everything. Who? That nun I told you about. Ah, still got her on your mind, huh? Why, comrade? I don't know. She must have left quite an impression on you. You have to admit she tried hard to set you straight. She was a nuisance. And yet, years later, you went to see her at that convent... You know why, comrade? Because she was part of your roots. You wanted to take root again. You're out of your mind. Then why did you visit her? Why, I, I happened to be passing by. No, my friend, it was deeper than that. You'd broken away from all the important things, family, church. 
He didn't belong anywhere. Don't make me laugh. I don't see you doing much laughing, my friend. You know, maybe she's still holding out her hand to you. You ever think of that? She's dead. And the dead stay dead. The evening came. And then we heard sounds outside the jail. Small crowd gathering. And then footsteps coming. This was it then. They were coming for us. No. My God, no. Not without a trial, at least. Yes. I've heard you communists often cry out to God when the end is near. Oh, please, please. We're not here to kill you. What? We've had a meeting. Some of us voted one way, the rest another. Some soldiers are coming here in a couple of days. If they find you here, they'll stand you up in front of a firing squad. Maybe you deserve that. We're not sure. We've talked about it. We thought about your families. We know what it is to have our men killed. Maybe you don't understand, but most of us voted that we didn't want your blood on our hands. You? You're going to let us go? You'll most likely think we're fools, and maybe we are. And maybe you'll kill some more of our men. We only know we have to show mercy, even to our enemies. That's funny. That's very, very funny. Somebody must be interceding for you, comrade. Maybe she hasn't given up yet. She? Who's this she you're talking about? A nun. A dead nun. He used to know her. What did he have to do with her? What did he have to do with a nun? He knew her when he was a kid. She tried to set him straight. You think she has interceded for him? She's not a saint. But maybe somebody like that would be pretty close to the Holy Mother, huh, Senora? You're not a communist. No, that's right. But you fight for them. You fight against our Lord. <laughs> so did Saul. I don't understand men like you. Someday, if I live that long, I'll come back here and explain it to you. You'd both better get ready to leave here. And so we lived. We were given rough peasant clothes to put on and allowed to go. By dawn, we were halfway through the mountains. Exhausted, we lay down to rest. What do you think, comrade? Think? Sometimes a man has to stop and think, huh? I don't know. I can tell you one thing. Even to stay out of jail, I couldn't fight against people like that anymore. So you and I have come to the parting of the ways, comrade. What are your plans? I don't know. I don't know. I fell asleep. I slept and I dreamed. There can be no other explanation. I dreamed of her. It was only in my dream that she came to me and stood before me. It was only in my dream that she came to me and reached out her hand to me. Andres, Andres, turn to our Lord. I don't believe in your fables, you know that. He created you, Andres. Turn to him now, and he will show you the road you want to travel. I know my road. No. Oh, no, Andres. Listen to me. There are the good things, and there are the evil things. The good things are from God, and he is your father. You belong to him. You don't belong to the dark world. Andres, listen to me. Say to him, Oh, my Lord, what would you have me do? I open my eyes to your light. Let me alone. Let me alone. No, I won't let you. I pray for you. I want you to open your ears to his voice. I want you to say to God, I am ready and willing to follow you, to do all the things you would have me do. I won't listen. I won't listen. My Lord, where would you have me go? My feet are your willing servants. Show me the path and I will walk along. It's no use. No use. Oh, Lord, how would you have me? I am a channel for you. Act through me. Let me be the channel for your love. 
your love of man so that I may sue you. Andres, I pray for you. I pray for you. Pray for yourself. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go. <laughs> Time to make a move, comrade. What? Listen to that sound. Good, huh? It's good, yes. Maybe... Maybe it's more than a sound. Maybe... It's a voice. Calling me back to that village. They can use a good man back there. Maybe I can do some good for somebody. There'll be some risk, but I'll make out. So, that's what I'll do, comrade. Good luck, my friend. What about you? You know, Pablo, you were right about her. She never did give up. She never did give up. Long years passed since 1938 in Spain. During that time, Sister Rafaela Mary was beatified. And for most of that time, I have been a priest, a servant of God. She guided me, blessed Sister Rafaela Mary, as she must have guided many others, back to our Lord. 